you guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2023 Honda Pilot Touring. And huge thanks to Joe at Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV or truck in the Port Ritchie, Tampa, Clearwater area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Joe. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Pilot has been Honda's mid-size three-row SUV since 2003. Fast forward to 2023, the fourth generation Pilot that you see here was released featuring a revised 3.5 liter V6 up five horsepower at 285 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. Made it to an all new 10 speed automatic transmission which replaces the old nine speed, but get a larger and reshaped body allowing for more cargo and passenger space. We're up to 22.4 cubic feet of cargo space behind the third row with the third row up, which is up from 16.5 for the previous model. Now, larger than the Telluride Highlander and Ford Explorer. I apologize for this win guys, it has been crazy windy lately i think a storm's coming later on tonight but for now pretty good weather outside of the wind so bear with me the 2023 trail sport trim is also much more off-road capable compared to 2022 we get a full inch lift compared to the previous model 18 inch rims with all-terrain tires steel underbody skip plates and revised torque vectoring all-wheel drive which can send up to 70 percent of the power to the rear axle we also get a new trail watch camera which automatically turns on under 15 miles per hour in trail mode we have five trims for the 2023 pilot all featuring the 3.5 liter v6 made it to the 10 speed automatic transmission starting with the sport with the base price under 40,000 bucks we get standard led headlights fog lights and tail lights heated front seats tri-zone automatic climate control blind spot monitoring lane departure warning collision mitigation braking and adaptive cruise control standard on a sub forty thousand dollar sport you can upgrade to the EXL, which we already reviewed on this channel, the base price. A tick under 42,000 bucks. With this trim, we get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, leather seats, power tailgate, and parking sensors. The Trail Sport technically sits above the EXL, even though it has a base price higher than the Touring. It's similarly equipped with the EXL, it's just more off-road oriented. It is super windy here, guys. I think it might fly away any moment. I hope the audio isn't too messed up in this video. Above the Trail Sport trim, even though it has a lower base price, is the Touring that you see here with a base price of 46,450 bucks. We get everything that we would get from the EXL, plus a panoramic moonroof, Bose sound system, navigation, and a hands-free tailgate. The top trim for the 2023 Pilot is the Elite with a base price of 52K. Here we get a heads-up display, a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster, heated and ventilated seats, plus heated second row. But here we have the Touring with a base price of 46,450 bucks. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, we get a fully redesigned front end, all new grille. I'm liking the design, it kind of reminds me of the new CRV, just much larger. Full LEDs for the headlights, LED daytime running lights, solid airflow in both corners, helps with the aerodynamics and overall front end styling. We get LED fog lights, full front parking sensing, no front facing camera, unfortunately, or front camera, but the Honda badge houses your advanced safety features the wheel and tire setup we get these upgraded 20 inch rims wrapped in michelin primacy all season tires the dimensions being 250 550 r20 so the 50 series sidewall the ride quality should still be really good in this suv and these are one of the best all season tires when it comes to grip we get some plastic cladding around the wheels and rocker panel area with a little aluminum strip right above the plastic mirrors our body color with a black contrast led turn signal on the mirror nothing going on down below if you want a 360 you got to go with the elite trim blind spot monitoring on the glass the glass fills up most of the frame we get some shiny chrome for the bottom portion of the window trim the top portion is blacked out blacked out roof rails and you can get a good look at your massive panoramic moon roof right up top we'll take a step back Hopefully you can get a good look at this vehicle side profile. The side profile kind of reminds me a little bit of a Dodge Durango, new Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think, but not necessarily a bad thing. The front end also reminds me a little bit of a Passport CRV, also not a bad thing. Very aggressively styled vehicle. The rear is also really cool. We'll check that out in one second. We get smart access for all four passengers. Hopefully you can get a good look at this window sticker. The tints are pretty dark, but hopefully you can still pick them up on camera for this 2023 Pilot two-wheel drive touring i'll try wiping off some of this dust here you go standard features pause i'll try to get myself out of this camera but pause take a look at everything you get standard on a 2023 pilot the only option we have here is a sonic gray pearl metallic paint color which is beautiful hopefully you can pick up the metallic in this florida sun that's about it though 22 mpgs pretty good on gas 19 city 27 on the highway out rear we get a push to open gas cap with easy fill you can throw 87 octane fuel for this 3.5 liter 
V6. Out rear, let me refocus this camera, it's getting a little bit blurry. We have full LED tail lights, turn signals and reverse lights are also LED. Shout out Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. Full rear parking sensing, you got your exhaust cutouts, which are not real unfortunately. The exhaust tips are right down below outside of the spare tire. We'll take one more step back, blacked out pilot badge right beneath your Honda badge. The rear wiper is not integrated with the third brake light, I kind of wish it was. But the third brake light isn't red outline, it has individual red LEDs, which is also really cool. Touring badge in the lower right corner. We'll take a squat back here, get one more look at the exhaust tips. And speaking of the exhaust tips, let's fire up this 3.5 liter V6 and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 3.5 liter revised V6 sold by Honda for the 2023 Pilot. It sounds okay, it makes decent power, 285 horsepower now and 262 pound-feet of torque, made it to an all-new 10-speed automatic transmission, available in either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. We have front-wheel drive here. You can expect zero to 60 in the low to mid six-second range. We don't get hydraulic struts, unfortunately, for the touring trim. I wonder if you get it for the Elite trim, but here, gotta deal with the prop rod. I'm currently using my arm as the prop rod. One thing I am noticing, I like how the washer fluid is located right outside, so if you spill, it's not gonna land all over your engine and internal area. The air intake, also a question mark. I'm not quite sure where the air filter would be, but pretty cool design. We have more suction all up top. We can shut this thing right up, drop it, take a step back. I don't think I dropped it. All right, it should be down now. We'll take one more step back. You guys can take one last look at the front end styling. I like the revised front end a lot. It reminds me of a hybrid between the all new CRV and Passport. The side profile, I can see a little bit of a Durango Jeep Grand Cherokee L resemblance, but overall very unique styling. We take a look at the interior for this near top trim touring model. See we have available again, smart access for all four passengers. I just locked the door. To unlock, you just put your hand right back here and opens right up. Up top, similar materials to the EXL. I'll turn these headlights off so they're not beeping at me. Aluminum and piano black trim beneath that. Soft touch for the center, gushy soft leather for the armrest. Four window auto one touch, four way adjustable mirrors to the left and right, lock and unlock, two tiers of storage. You can fit probably a 20 ounce water bottle, maybe a Red Bull in there. I think somebody might have spilled something in there earlier. Hopefully that gets wiped away. You can probably fit a foot long in this pocket. You'll easily fit a foot long down below. Bose premium sound system. I'll leave a link right here to show you how many watts exactly it has. I believe it has 540. I may be off by a little bit. The seats, we get these really comfortable leather seats, solidly bolstered with a little cloth strip in the center that runs for the bottom portion too. Fully adjustable lumbar control. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. Pretty similar interior to the EXL. However, it's a different color scheme and the materials and features are a little bit different as we'll check out right now. You can take a step inside, foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and watch everything fire right First thing we notice is the steering wheel. Reminds me a little bit of both the new CRV and Civic SI we just reviewed in this channel, which is good. It's a nice thick wheel, no contrast stitching, but it's leather. Solid tenon to bolstering notch, 93 fits really well in your hands. Faux aluminum trim down beneath, kind of functioning as a six o'clock spoke. The horn area is rubberized, Honda badge, the horn itself. Very aggressive sounding horn. People should definitely be getting out of your way. We'll do a window check. I think we get dual panes for the Touring. Yes, we get dual panes. We did not get dual panes in the EXL, but the Touring and the Elite trims get dual panes. And the EXL was unbelievably quiet. I'm excited to see just how quiet this car is with the dual pane windows. Speaking of the steering wheel though, on the left side you have the volume and skip controls, home and the voice commands. This button and the home controls your gauge display. We'll check that out in one second. On the right side, cruise control, adaptive cruise control and active steering. Speaking of the adjustments, right now we're looking at range and fuel. We have speed and time, audio, phone, navigation, turn by turn because we do get navigation on the touring trim. We don't get navigation on the lower trims standard. Driver attention, seat belts, maintenance, tire pressure, safety and support, and no content. You can adjust the brightness, gauge display settings, warnings, and range and fuel. That's probably my personal favorite to look at at all times, so we'll leave it there. The Tacos is 6,500 RPM, digital speedo in the center, 140 mile an hour speedometer on the right. We have our thermometer, mileage of the vehicle, and fuel level beneath that, clock two. Cool. 
Paddle shifters control the 10-speed automatic transmission. We'll try those out at some point in this review. Auto headlamps, auto high beams, and we get fog lights. The stocks, very satisfying click. We don't get that camera for the blind spot on the touring trim. I wonder if you get it on the Elite. I'm not quite sure. I don't think you do, but it used to be available on some of the Honda's vehicles. We don't get rain sensing wipers. It would be nice to get rain sensing wipers for a near top trim pilot, but the intermittent sock is right here in the center. To left the steering wheel, we have our power tailgate. It's hands-free, but the key has to be in your pocket. Traction control you can disable, tilt and telescoping steering wheel, hood latch release in the corner. Hopefully you can get a good look at your pedals. Dashboard is all soft touch, additional Bose speaker in the corner, nine inch touchscreen, similar to the EXL, but here we get navigation. So press navigation, dismiss, cool. One thing I don't like, the resolution, the response, not quite as good as most of this vehicle's competition. Honda's navigation really has never been top of the class. It works, it gets the job done. If you don't like Honda's navigation, we do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both are wireless for the touring trim. You can go home, press the home button. I like how we get the hard buttons, all apps, navigation, phone, FM, Bluetooth, smartphone, series, and the trip computer. General settings, you guys can pause, take a look at everything else that we have available in this vehicle. We also get cabin talk for the pilots so you can talk to the passengers out back if they're preoccupied with their iPads, whatever, you know, kids. Anyway, we can hop out of here. My personal favorite to look at at all times would be navigation. We can take a quick look at the trip computer, see what comes available. You get the range, average fuel economy, previous average fuel economy, trip A and trip B. We can go back to navigation because it's my personal favorite to look at at all times. Zoom in a little bit more. If you use these buttons, it actually is pretty responsive and it's cool. It actually shows you everywhere that you were for your previous trip. We were right there in the front of the parking lot, drove it out to the back. Beneath that, we have our hazards and air vents. They're not quite the same as the Civic and the new CRV, how they run flushly, but not really a big deal because this area for both of those vehicles wouldn't be used as an air vent, just a faux air vent. I'd rather have the storage that we have here instead. Beneath that, dual zone auto climate control. We have tri-zone auto climate control in the pilot. The rear settings are adjustable up front too, and you can lock the rear settings if they keep messing around back there too. You can fit a couple phones in this slot. It's not quite deep enough for a phone, but it'll fit like a cigarette pack perfectly. USB-A and C port, 12 volt, put a radar detector in there. Wireless charging pad with some storage or some space for a second phone right outside of it. The gear selector controls the 10-speed automatic transmission. We got drive and sport mode. We'll check out sport in this review once we take it out for a drive. We can check out the backup camera too. Not the best resolution. We, get, we don't get a 360. We have front and rear parking sensors, which are appreciated, but no 360 in the resolution honestly leaves something to be desired. We do get guidance lines and trajectory. That's nice. Three different views for the camera. We have a wider view and an over-the-top trailer hitch view, but my personal favorite would be this standard view. Throw right back in a park and we immediately return right back to our map. That's nice. Behind that drive mode selector, we have econ, snow, tow mode, and sport mode. We'll start the review off in normal transition into sport and just see what the differences are. Auto start stop, we can disable, hill descent control, electronic parking brake with brake hold. Large cup holders, you'll fit 20 ounce water bottles in there with no problem. Pushy things to keep your drinks in place. The armrest is large, padded leather. Pretty spacious, you can check it out. You can probably fit a 12 pack of one liter bottles of soda in there and a nice coin slot right outside of it. We shut this thing right up. Glove box, we have technically two tiers. You'll fit gloves, maybe a shoe, possibly two in this first tier if you have like a small foot under a size six. The glove box itself, really well damped. Pretty spacious, you'll fit 30 license plates in there, 25, 30 license plates with no problem. Auto dimming, frameless rear view mirror, not, not literally frameless, but there's like a one millimeter frame, so I'll call it a frameless rear view mirror. Auto dimming, three garage home link settings on it. Sunglass holder, cool, with a rear occupant monitor. I guess you can see what your mischievous kids are doing in the back seats. The interior lights are LED. We get a rollover warning, but the handling of the new Pilot, I'm telling you, is impressive. We'll check that out in this review too. The sunroof, you can open up the shade real quick. It opens up pretty quickly unlike some of the other vehicles we reviewed in this channel. The first panel that opens isn't the largest. We'll see how far it opens in one second. Cool. The glass, it goes underneath the second panel, which is nice, so it's not sticking out like a sore thumb. We have a little wind protector. It doesn't open up very far. We'll see if it goes any further. It does. That's nice. So almost to the end of the front row, we can poke our way out of here. It's a beautiful day today in Port Ritchie. It's sunny and 79 degrees, but the wind is brutal. We got like 30, 35 mile an hour wind gusts. I hope the audio is not too distorted 
for this video. But we're inside right now, so it should be perfectly fine. We'll leave the shade open. So when we hop out back, you can see how much light is brought into the cabin. That's about it for the front seat for the 2023 Pilot. If we didn't mention heated seats, no ventilated seats. Gotta go with the Elite if you want ventilated seats. We can take a step out back though. Two person memory too. Quite a few things I missed. If there's anything else I missed, leave a comment in the comment section out rear. Up top, we have hard plastic, just like in the EXL. Unfortunately, I would expect soft touch for the touring trim. We get a sunshade though. It's not automatic, but that wouldn't be expected for a vehicle in this price point. For the center, we get soft touch, same aluminum with piano black beneath that, cushy soft leather armrest, auto one touch, two Bose speakers on the door panel. Two tiers of storage. You'll fit a 12 ounce water bottle and a big gulp right next to it. Probably a six inch sub, maybe a foot long beneath. It'll be a tight squeeze. Make sure you don't have like ranch or anything that'll squeeze all over your door panel. The seats aren't very well bolstered, but they're the same materials up front. We have leather seats with a little cloth inlay for the center. They're adjustable. You can recline the seats and slide the seats. The center seat is removable and it folds down into like a console for the two front seats. Not a true captain's chairs, but it can convert into captain's chairs if you remove that console. The legroom, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have a couple inches of legroom. You can slide the seats back a little bit, and now I have a couple more inches, but still nothing too crazy. Headroom, I have at least two, three inches of it. If you're under six foot four, six foot five, you should fit behind your seat settings with no problem. Third zone climate, two USB A ports beneath that. The air vents, they are in the center console, nothing going on in the B pillars. Hook for the grab handle interior light LED, pretty decent light bar into the cabin. Thanks to this massive panoramic moonroof. This armrest, two sides of leather, two cup holders. You'll fit 12 ounces, maybe 16s. Nice pass through, good for a phone. This little area is also good for phones or some car accessories. You can lift this thing right back up by pulling the slatch. It's gonna be tough without two hands, but we'll figure it out. Oh, there we go. Cool. You can also drop it simply by pulling the slatch and the seat, as you mentioned, is removable. That's about it though for the back seat. What you see is basically what we get. We can hop out into the third row, see how much space is offered back there. You gotta press this button and the seat shoots and slides forward. You got to pull the slash to access into the third row. But now that the seat is up, take a step inside and see how much space is offered in the 2023 Pilot Touring. So the seat all the way back, this is all the way back and I still have at least an inch of knee room. No, this isn't super spacious, but for a mid-size SUV, this has to be one of the most spacious in the segment. And behind myself, very solid cargo. Remember, 22.7 or 22.4 cubic feet of cargo space, up by like six or seven cubic feet compared to last year. Big changes, big improvements from Honda. Interior lights, LED. Back here, I think I just pressed it, so I'll press it one more time. There we go. Two cup holders, about a 16 ounce should fit in there, and probably a big gulp will fit in that back console. Additional air vent for the third row. USB A port, additional speaker out back. That's about it though for the third row. I'm impressed with how spacious 2023 Pilot is. Definitely one of the most practical for families that need to put people in the third row, but you don't wanna go full size. You wanna get over 20 MPGs. This vehicle's advertising at 22 MPGs. There is absolutely zero full size SUV that will even come within five MPGs of that. So this Pilot, super practical, super spacious for a midsize three row SUV. That's about it though, we'll hop out into this cargo space. We get the hands-free tailgate. I don't have the key in my pocket, so we have to press the button underneath the L and the tailgate doesn't open up very quickly, so you don't really have to worry about getting doofed in the head. Behind a third row seat, as you see, very decent cargo space and that's helped with this pretty impressive secret storage. That is a massive cubby. So if you plan on keeping the third rows up like all the time, if you have people you have to put in the third rows all the time, definitely remove this tray. You'll have a much more cargo space. Hopefully I can figure this tray out. I'll catch back with you on sec. Okay, the cubby's folded right back the way it was. Hopefully you get a good idea of the size of this floor. Very large floor. You fold those second row seats down. I'd expect you to fit a 75, 80, maybe an 85 inch TV back here. This is a massive cargo space. The step in is a little bit high. I'm a little bit over six foot. I'm about five, six inches away from the step in. So it'll be tough for older or smaller pets to jump back here. You might have to give them a boost. But once they're in here, pretty tall ceiling, plenty of headroom for the pets. Very spacious overall. We get an additional 12 volt for the cargo space. I'm not quite sure what this button would do. I guess in case you get stuck back here, this is like your emergency latch. Subwoofer back here too for the Bose sound system. That's about it. We can press this button. The tailgate gives you a second. So if you have grocery bags in your hands, 
you have time to get out of the way so you don't get doofed in the head. That's about it though for the 2023 Pilot. It's a nice SUV. I like the rear styling with the LED taillights. The side profile looks bold and aggressive, especially with those black roof rails, 20 inch rims, 50 sidewall tires, and this beautiful all new Sonic Gray Pearl Metallic paint color. That's about it for the inside and outside of the 2023 Honda Pilot Touring. Let's take it out for a drive. All right guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 Honda Pilot Touring. Let's take it out for a drive. And the first thing I notice, the throttle isn't overly sensitive. The steering is absurdly light. You don't feel just about anything through the wheel, at least not in normal mode. We'll take a step out here as soon as we get the chance. Looks like we got the chance, nowhere to go though. What about third throttle? Okay, solid pickup. Taking a step out here. Yeah, the throttle's not very sensitive at all. It takes a second for the power to really be felt through the foot, but once you're leaning into it, yeah, not very sensitive at all. We lean into it about halfway once you get the chance over here. All right, guys, normal mode, taking a step out here. About half throttle. Okay. Okay, it goes to about 4,500 RPM. And we get to highway speeds pretty quickly. I did not adjust my mirrors. I can't see nothing. Big truck in my blind spot. And just cruising along at highway speeds, you don't hear anything. You hear a tiny bit of road noise, but very limited amount. Wind noise doesn't exist, and it was an absurdly windy day today. So that says a lot about the isolation of this SUV. There's a solid amount of low end torque. Even in overdrive, we can pick up speed. I wouldn't call it passing power, but we can pick up speed and pass people that like to camp out in the left lane going under the speed limit pretty easily, but people that are going fast, they're gonna to wanna to lean into the throttle to be expected. And at higher speeds right now, still the wind noise is basically non-existent. I'm impressed with the isolation of this vehicle. The brakes feel good, not overly sensitive, but they feel nice and predictable. Get a nice bite through the foot. All right, guys, we can throw it into sport, see what the differences are. We got a little back road coming up over here. Hopefully this guy gets out of our way today. All right, taking a step out here. First gear on the gas. Woo! Through the turn, handles well. Nice, not a whole lot of top end, but I like the way this V6 sounds. Drop it down a third, third gear pull. Okay. <laughs> it shifts for you once you pass about like 6,200. It feels torquey down low in the mid-range too. It feels pretty torquey. Get nice rev match downshifts. Second gear. Okay, yeah. Snappy feeling 10 speed transmission. We can turn around right here, check out the turning radius. See what we got. Pretty sharp, wow. Not bad. Ladies outside, so we're not gonna cause any mayhem in front of her house. But okay, second gear. On the gas. Woo! Yeah. This thing can move. I don't think you'll do zero to 60 in the low six second range, but the mid six is definitely possible, especially with the snappy transmission. I like it. I probably wouldn't recommend leaving it in sport, but in sport mode, the throttle gets more sensitive. All the complaints I had before are basically solved in sport mode. The steering gets a tiny bit heavier, but really not much. It's still absurdly, laughably light. Slow down a little bit. Third gear. Try third gear pull on the gas. Good torque. Yeah. And it consistently pulls all the way to redline. This is a nice feeling engine. No, it's not a powerhouse, but it makes good power. And Honda's V6 engines, they're known for the reliability again third gear or fourth gear see even in fourth gear the pull is solid Woo. nice <laughs> this thing is not bad we'll hit a speed bump real quick see the composure and ride quality we don't we don't have to beat it up much further hopefully you get the point of the performance this thing can move Luxury wise, speed bump. Wow, such good ride quality. This is one of the smoother rides I've felt in a long time. We just got out of the Audi Q7 and this feels just as smooth 
as that car. It doesn't feel quite as smooth as the e-tron SUV. As you see, the touring radius is excellent. The e-tron SUV was probably one of the smoothest rides I felt in any car, but this feels just as good. It doesn't feel any worse than the Q7. Starting off in second gear. Yeah, second gear is the money gear in this thing. It feels strong in second gear. It feels torquey in third, feels torquey in fourth, but second gear, it really feels like a beefy SUV. Okay, we'll make this light. Downshift to second, throwing it in way quicker than we should. Good handling. <laughs> Gets the highway speed nicely. We don't have to beat it a whole lot further. We'll throw it right back into regular drive, take it out of sport, put it back into normal mode. The steering I immediately feel much lighter. The throttle is a little bit less sensitive. I gotta lean into it a little bit further to keep up with traffic. But other than that, I'll probably keep it in normal mode for daily driving, maybe sport every once in a while when I want to get on it. But for daily driving, going to work and back, normal is more than enough. Overall, this is a great SUV. And with this touring trim, you get all the features you possibly want or need. Navigation, dual pane windows too, tri-zone climate, leather seats, and enough space to fit full-size adults in the third row in the all-the-way back seat setting. I fit back there with no problem. No, I wouldn't call myself comfortable, but I had at least an inch or two of headroom, an inch or two of knee room. So for, even for long trips, I would sit back there without complaining. And most mid-size three-row SUVs, that's just not possible. So overall, if you're looking for a mid-size three-row SUV that can fit seven full-size people comfortably, you don't wanna go full-size. You want over 20 MPGs, I would 100% recommend the 2023 Pilot. I genuinely like it, and this touring trim it's probably the best bang for your buck. The EXL is also a great bang for your buck, but with this touring trim, you get more features, you get a more luxurious cabin. And overall, if I was going with the 2023 Honda Pilot, I would probably go with the touring trim. But check out the EXL too. If you don't need all the features, you just need the leather seats, power tailgate, parking sensors, that's more than enough for you. Check out the EXL as well. But overall, the 2023 Pilot, I would definitely recommend checking it out. And big thanks to Joe at Ocean Honda in Port Ritchie, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa, Port Ritchie, Clearwater area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out. And huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment, let me know what you like, let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment, let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you wanna see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope all of you have a great day.